Praise the Lord. Well, good evening, everyone. It's a joy to be with you another Wednesday night here on our Bible study platform. We are so excited about the journey that we have been having in the book of Nehemiah, and we're talking about repair, rebuild, and rebrand. We have done four lessons so far, and last week we took a break to cast vision into in our Zoom room, and I trust that you are blessed by our time together. And we want to continue this evening on lesson five. And it's a joy for me to welcome on the platform this evening, Elder Michael Facey. Welcome. Thank you, Bishop. It's such a, it's such a privilege to be able to join you on this platform. Right? Well, good to have you. And you, yeah. didn't, you didn't come alone. <laughs> you brought your lovely wives, Man, yes. <laughs> Sister Millicent Facey. Welcome. Thank you, Pastor. It is indeed an honor to join you in this platform. It, it's pushing me in this season that we're in, and that's definitely what I want. So as we re repair and rebuild and rebrand, I wanted Amen. to start with me first. Yes. Right? So we can come together as a unit to, to bring forth glory in yes. this season. Amen. Well, welcome. Well, we, we, we want to hear what the Lord has been laying, laying upon your heart as we begin our journey. Uh, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we want to thank you tonight for your faithfulness. Thank you for the hope that you gave us. We just bless you. I pray for everyone in this platform as we go through the word of the Lord. And Father, tonight as we speak about the unity that is needed in to repair, rebuild, and rebrand, I pray, Father, for oneness uh, as a congregation that we will build, oh God, as a, a body of people you have called in this season. Thank you for your faithfulness. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, go ahead, get to your Bibles and your notepad, and let's um, journey in the Word of the Lord. Yes. Tonight is going to be um, the unity that is needed, for we have recognized that we, we cannot build without unity, and it's absolutely important. So let's go to the book of Nehemiah chapter 5, Nehemiah chapter 5, and then as we go through the outline of Nehemiah, we're going to look at the problem, um, we, we're going to see the mistreating of the Jews, of their brethren. We're going to look at how Nehemiah responded when he rebuked the people. And we look at the people who listened to Nehemiah. And then we'll at, um, end with the sacrifices that was needed from the people. So let me read the first five verses as we looked at the problem that the nation was facing at that time. So he named Nehemiah chapter 5 from verse 1 to 5. And, say, and there was a great outcry of the people and their wives against the Jewish brethren. For there were those who said, We are sons and our daughters are many. Therefore let us get grain that we may eat and live. There were also some who said, We have mortgaged our lands and vineyards and houses that we might buy grain because of, our fa because of the famine. There were also those who said, We have borrowed money for the king's tax on our lands and vineyard. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their children. And indeed we are forcing our sons and our daughters to be slaves. And some of our daughters have been brought into slavery. It is not in our power to redeem them. For other men have our lands and vineyard. What a situation they were facing here. Many um, people were struggling in this time. We see this problem arose and it was threatening to end the rebuilding project that Nehemiah and the nation had started. This unity is one of the quickest ways to stop people from working together towards a common goal. You see, when disunity arises, it will prevent the work of the Lord um, um, completing on going forth. In the last chapter, in chapter 4, we look at the adversity from external forces. Now, in this chapter, we see the adversity arise from inside of the camp. Because we recognize Satan really does not raise up enemies. He does not only raise up enemies against God's work if he can turn God's people against each other. So here we see the problem, Elder Facey, of the, the mistreating of one another. Share a little on that um, this evening. Well, Bishop, when I, uh, I looked at this particular area, and um, I, I thought about it for a long while, 
Mm -hmm. so one of the one of the greatest mistakes that we make, that individuals make, is to is to oppress those who are normally working within the kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it, as we move forward uh, as a body, mm -hmm. um, we, it is it is important. It is mm -hmm. important that those who have the the resources, right, mm -hmm. those who are in a better position than others, to to help to alleviate the burden. Yeah. And, uh, and the depravity of those who are without, you know. And so um, I thought maybe, I thought to myself that it is not just, to, it's not, it is not um, right to take advantage of yeah. those who are less than you in a situation right. where we actually trying to move forward and having the same um, mindset in terms of moving a, a particular uh, movement forward. Yeah, that we need to care for those who are, you know. Yeah. Um, well, you said that in, in, in part of the situation, you said those who are in a position yeah. ought to help those in a less fortunate position. Yeah, yeah. If you look in the book of Acts, yeah. the statement said they had all things in, in common, common. Yeah. because there were those who sold lands and yeah. and and brought the proceeds and laid it at the apostle feet that everyone could could be ministered within that communal setting. Now we have moved far away from that, yeah. but the principle still remains yeah, where we ought not to take advantage yes, right. of those who are struggling it's among us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, ought not to take advantage. My friends, this is the essence of what we've seen here. What is happening here? Many poor families were complaining. Why? Because the rich were taking advantage of them. They were those who were struggling just to survive. The rich brethren were not helping them. They were taking advantage of the situation because those who needed food, what they would do, they would go ahead and and mortgage the lands, you know, yes. it, it, it to, in order for them to survive. The rich Jews forced their poor brethren to mortgage their own property just to get money in order to survive. Some were taken into slavery. Um, can you imagine the situation that they were facing here? It, and, and, try, and asking heavy interest. Right. of those heavy interest in other words, they could not afford, afford it mm -hmm. and as a result they were brought into bondage that's let's talk right. a little about it well that brings them into bankruptcy because that's the plan of the enemy to bring the people of God into a bankruptcy that your hands are tied and yeah. you couldn't do anything and we're not here as mm -hmm. a body to take this advantage of we're here to build up that's and right. edify yeah. and there was no edification happening here these people were in distress and there wasn't any compassion Passion and God's children are called to be to show a heart of compassion Passion. and generosity, yeah. and this was not displayed in the season. That's right. In Deuteronomy um, chapter 23, verse 19, God had already said to the nation, mm -hmm. Do not charge your fellow Israelite interests. Mm -hmm. God had already given them the word, but because of they had gone now and they had seen how the Persian, what if it started under the Babylonian system, then the Persian system, which they were now living under, how how the king tax was a catalyst. Sometimes we 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 see the world do certain thing, and we think as believers we are to bring it in. Mm -hmm. We are to begin to emulate that. But God had already tell them, do not charge one another interest. But if we see the king was charging them interest, so why not we do the same thing? Why not we do the same thing? But God wants us, wants us as believers to be different. Right. We don't have to operate like the world because many times we try to bring in a world system in the absolutely, church. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and, and that can be dangerous at times because yeah. uh, we are in the world but we cannot do what the world does. Right. We have That's to be right. different. We have to stand out mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. children of God. Yeah. yeah. I, I think um, a lot of times when we bring um, ideas from the world, where actually those ideas will actually stifle mm. what we're trying to accomplish within Kingdom Realm. You got to say that again. Yeah. Many times when we bring world ideas yeah. in kingdom operation, yeah. it was stifled. Like, my God, we, we got to be careful that we don't try to 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 mix, so to speak, um, kingdom work with um, ungodly principles, because it will certainly stifle it. Because many times we think in order to, to, to be able to deal with what we need to do as a 
church community, we need a worldly pattern. But can I tell you, God can build his church. And in this season, he can rebuild, he can repair, he can rebrand with his ideas. We need to find out what is the Lord saying in this season. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hear what Proverbs chapter, 20, Proverbs chapter 3 verse um, 27 said. It said, do not withhold good when it's in your power to help them or help others. God do not want us to withhold good from others. Uh, because sometimes we think if, if someone misuse, did not appreciate the good we have done for them in the past, now we should just go ahead and withhold it. I, I, I think that that's the wrong concept of how God wants us to, to really act about how God wants us to really operate. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we're to be conscious of, um, of how we deal with, yeah. with those around us based on, on their position and our position. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think in this particular text, I think they were, they were capitalizing upon the, the lack yeah. and the misfortune of mm -hmm. others, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times we do that without understanding the consequences, yeah. how it hurts the 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 movement that we're yeah. trying to um to accomplish yeah. yeah because many times in 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 our world today and and it's it is no different within the christian community um that if someone because the reason why they have begin to bring their fellows in um israelite into slavery they were forcing them to pay high interest right. forcing them to mortgage um their lands because they believe that uh, they need collateral should they not be able to, right. to yes. pay. Right. Now, right. now, for us, we have got to throw money away. We have to be yeah. wise and so forth. Indeed. But also, we should not be stingy mm -hmm. and, 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 yeah. and inflict these things on That's people. Right. I think each of us have an opportunity to look for ways that we can help those that are in need, yeah. especially when they're placed in this position. But uh, um, their fellow Jew wasn't looking for opportunity to help. They're looking for ways to exploit mm -hmm. and take away their possession. And that should not be happening in the realm. So as we go through the season of rebuilding and repair, yeah. each and every one of us, and it start with me, looking for opportunity, mm -hmm. how we can be a blessing, blessing. Mm -hmm. to those in the body of Christ. Can you imagine if yeah. each and every one of us look for opportunity to help those that are in need, what a blessing yes. and what a joy it will bring forth in the house yeah. of the Lord. Looking for opportunity. This week, my friend, look for an look opportunity for to be a blessing. You know, um, maybe it may be a, a time for you to um, release because Israel had something called Jubilee. Mm -hmm. You know, so it may be an opportunity. Some you have been holding on to someone and holding on um, because someone probably owe you something. It's time you could this time you could release that, you know, and just be a blessing. So look for opportunity to be a blessing to someone in this season. Now let's look at from verses um, six on down to verses eleven. It says, and I became very angry. So here we see in the response of Nehemiah. I became very angry when I heard the outcry and these words. After serious thought, I rebuked the nobles and rulers and said to them, each of you is expecting usury from his brother. So I call a great assembly against them. And I said to them, according to our ability, we have redeemed our Jewish brethren who were sold to the nations. Now indeed, will you even sell your brethren? Or should they be sold to us? Then they were silenced and found nothing to say. Then I said, what are you doing is not good. Should you, should you not walk in the fear of God because of the reproach of the nation of our enemies? I also with my brethren and my servants am lending them money and grain. Please let us stop this usury. Restore now to them. Even this day, their lands, the vineyards, the olive groves, and their houses, also a hundred of the money and the grain, and new wine and oil that they have ch uh, that you have charged to them. So here we see, um, so to speak, Nehemiah is cracking the whip. Yes. <laughs> Bishop, it is, it is so important that when we are informed by the word, yes, yes. that we can be quickly held accountable for actions outside right. of the word. That's right. And Nehemiah That's right. understood that they 
they knew the word. Yeah. So he yeah. quickly called them into accountability yes. by, by yeah. using yeah, yeah. using the word. I, I I love it. He said he called an assembly when yes. he heard yeah. the outcry. He responded. He responded. He responded. Right. Amen. So it, it, a good leader is emotionally involved. Yes. Right. Right. Amen. And yeah. respond right away. Yeah. Sometimes we tend to mm -hmm. let things fester and it create yes. more problems. Mm -hmm. But he dealt with the matter right away. He yeah. called the people. That's right. That's right. He, he saw the situation. Responded quickly. Because that's what leadership is all about. Yes. Because uh, when in, in community, when you see injustice, yes. it needs to be addressed. Yes. There has to be a response immediately. Yes. He, he called them and he called the assembly and they responded and he said, we are facing adversity for, from our enemy. Yes. Why are we facing the adversity from within also? Yes. That's right. You know, I don't know about you, but we got some devils to fight. We don't need yes. to be fighting devils yes. in the house of the no, Lord. We don't think so. <laughs> you know, let us deal with the obstacles and the opposition that the enemy bring our way. But now the battle had come within the camp of Israel. But we see Nehemiah, he rose up immediately, Amen. call the assembly, yes. bring the word of God, this is what the word of the Lord, and begin to speak to them. He was not happy. He was not happy what was going on. He did not ignore the situation, but he asked the people to come forth for them to deal with the situation. A good leader is not passive, but they're active. active. Yes. A good leader cares spiritually and emotionally for his people, showing empathy and concern for those he cares for. So we see the, the, the empathy of, of, of Nehemiah. When he heard the outcry, I, I love what verse um, um, 6 and 7 said. I became very angry yes. when I heard the outcry and these words. After serious thought, I rebuked the nobles. So he heard it. So yes. it, he, th there was a response from him. Amen. Not sitting back and say, well, I'm not doing anything. you know, I cannot do anything, you know. These nobles, you know, how am I going to deal with them? Yeah. He, they, they have a certain type of influence in what I'm doing. Mm. So I really don't want to rock the boat. My God. Amen. But I have to really hand it to the people that they, they, they were able to humble themselves. Yes, yes, yes. And, yes. That, and that's important, right? When we, get, when we hear rebuke, right? Mm. It's up to us to respond. respond. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. also think that they had good relationship with Nehemiah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And every leader should have good relationship. Yeah. Know the heart of your leader. So they were willing to say, well, Nehemiah have our best interests at heart. Right. So we're going right. to respond. Yeah. So we can deal with this matter. And as I read through it, I was really... I can just imagine how Nehemiah felt because mm -hmm. uh, now we have to deal with the Sanballat and Tobiah. Yeah. Can you imagine that this go out, that yeah. there was infighting mm -hmm. among mm -hmm. the camp? That's right, that's right, that's right. Can yeah. you imagine? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this would have caused certainly the demoralization of the entire nation because um, that would embolden Yes. The, the son Bala and the Tobiah to, right. to, to yeah. bring the attack against them. That's we also see as a, as, as a leader, a good leader takes action. Nehemiah's strong emotional response forced him to take action to address the issue. Good leaders don't just stand by and let sin and disunity rip apart God's people. Amen. You know, that's and, that's, and that's where I think it takes um, courage. Yes, yeah. Uh, um, it, and it's not. It's important that we not just have courage, but we exercise that courage. Exercise that courage. So yeah. Joshua was told to have it, mm. to be of courage, be yeah. courageous, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and to and to um to exercise that courage, mm -hmm. because a lot of time we're going to face with circumstances as leaders, right? Yeah. That going to put us in precarious position where we have to exercise that's right those courage. That's right. And and uh, and it, it's important that we have courage yeah. to deal with certain deal with things that face us in our immediate, um, sometime in midstream Stream, in yeah. our assignment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Those things come up and we have That's to have good. courage to deal with it. That's right. right. Because I, just for thought, Bishop, I yeah. don't really want to take, take the lesson out to any mm -hmm. <laughs> areas where we, we can bring it back. But I thought about Joshua. <laughs> yeah. When Joshua had to deal with the Akon situation, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It takes, I mean, it takes a, a, a leader with internal, I got it, internal fortitude. fortitude. Mm -hmm. That's what courage really is, right? Yeah. Having mm -hmm. the ability to deal with situation, even though, right, you are, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it, it's hurtful. Yeah. But but you do have the emotional yeah. and the, uh, and, uh, the, the emotional um, fortitude on the inside to deal yeah. with that, yeah. and definitely, and it's it's courage is the 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 willingness to, as you said, not just 
your courage, but yeah. you're going to act. Act. You yeah. act. Nehemiah, yeah. he took action. Yeah. He took action. That's and right. he realized action needed to take, and yeah. he rise up and get it done. Mm -hmm. Because we, not only they, this injustice, but um, the command that God had given them yeah. in Deuteronomy was sin. Mm -hmm. Sin. Mm -hmm. And good leaders need to take action against sin. Mm -hmm. When they start, and you brought up the act, the, the example of, of um, Joshua 5, um, Achan, yeah. and when he saw it, he took action. He took action. Joshua took action. Talk about the importance of leaders standing up against sin. Well, it is vital, mm -hmm. you know, when, when God put us in certain position, right, mm -hmm. we have to, we got to be vigilant. Yeah. We have to be alert, right? And when we see these things, we have to move, right? Yeah. We cannot just sit back and do nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, the Word of God tells us that we got to be vigilant. Yeah. We got to be watchful, redeeming the time, because the enemy, he's yeah. like a roaring lion, mm -hmm. seeking whom mm -hmm. he may yeah. devour. Yeah. So we have to have, a, have ears that we can hear what the Lord is saying and mm -hmm. eyes to see mm -hmm. and then just act yeah. so we can bring forth glory to God. I, I love how, um, and sometimes even in a Christian um, um, community today, it's hard to deal with sin publicly, but Nehemiah dealt with yeah. the situation yeah. publicly yes. because everybody wants to cover, cover, cover the sin, okay. you know, let's don't deal with it publicly, but he, he, he called them public and dealt with it publicly. Why? Because the sin had affected the camp publicly. There is a place in the body of Christ, folks, where, where accountability is absolutely necessary. And Nehemiah did not shift blame. He put the blame squarely on the nobles, the rich one, those who were taking advantage of those who were less fortunate. He brought, he, he, he showed them what is the problem and make it clear who is responsible and what needed to be done. So he said, this is the problem. These are the folks who are responsible and let's deal with it. Now, people, some people think this is this unity to do all of this, but that's how unity That's how it is, yeah. And I got to give credit to the people. They, they, they responded yeah. in, a, in, a, in a repentive way. Yeah. yeah. Rather than putting up, you know, on the wall yeah. and trying to, to fight back. That's because right. they understood. Yeah. That, the, a matter of fact, I thought about it, and I realized that the people understood the power of the prophet. That's right. Because mm. the prophet had the ability to yeah. speak. That's right. Curse and yeah. blessing upon their life, upon yeah. their situation. That's right. And this yeah. is a perfect situation here for Nehemiah to bring curse That's upon right. them. That's right. But right, he was, he's trying to restore and bring yeah. up. Yeah. If they're going to have success, they need to listen to the prophet. Amen. But um, when we look at this this passage of scripture and the whole name and, and Elder Facey were just sharing, you give credit to the people because what we see, Nehemiah as a leader, he challenged the people to yes. do better. The right thing. better. Yes, yeah. And, yeah. and you know, that's what leaders do, right? We, we, he, he was a godly man and he mm. knew that these things would come because yeah. he prayed for God to give him yeah. uh, the strength to deal with these situations. Mm -hmm. so, so being in such a position as a cup bearer, he knows that there will be infighting. So yeah. God prepared him ahead of time mm -hmm. to deal with these situations when he's confronted right. with them. He was prepared. And I like what he did. Mm -hmm. He did not only deal mm -hmm. with the problem, but he restored them yeah. in love. Yes, and that's, that's right. what God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. Not only to see the problem and leave it, but he restore back the people mm -hmm. so they can get back to work that's right. and do because the job had to, to be, be done. done. Yes. And regardless, there was opposition. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Praise God. Amen. Yes. Nehemiah knew that the people could do better. Amen. Yes. Yeah. You know, I believe in, 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 in all of you. I believe in folks. I believe Amen. all of us can do better. In this season, let us rise up and do better. We will not settle and feel that there's nothing else I can do. You know, um, let me leave it up to some, um, some other folks. Let somebody else do it. No, all of us are part of what needs to be done. Teamwork is what is needed. We need the yeah. unity. Now is not the time to pull out um, on the peripheries and say, you know what, I'm just going to do my own thing. No, my friends, let us all do what needed to be done and come together. We are not pessimists, but we are optimists. We believe yeah. that our better days are ahead of yeah. us. Amen. We will not assume the worst of you. And we do not want you to assume the worst of us. 
we believe that things will get better. A good leader wants his people to be a good testimony Amen. because he said, you know what, if we are doing this here, how will the Gentiles Can you uh, see that? How will the Sambala and the Tobias, you know, I want to see the, your, our testimony yeah. because now they will say, well, you know, your own people are oppressing your, your, right. your, 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 your brothers and sisters. Um, what do you expect us to do? Then he might realize that the action would be scrutinized by Amen. others. By treating each other poorly, the unbelievers around them would have reason to criticize and slander them. We ought to treat one another. If we look in the, in the, in the New Covenant, the Bible calls us to esteem one another, yeah. forgive one another, bless one another, yes. pray for one another, right. encourage one another. This is not where we are to be tearing down one another. Absolutely, absolutely. And Amen. Bishop, as I read this in, I was yeah. saying, the God that we serve does things well. Yes. When he put us in position, That's right. he knows what we can handle. Mm -hmm. And Nehemiah, what a blessing by just know how to respond, how to come forward, yes. how to speak live, and just to give hope to these people. Uh, I think believe that one point he said the joy of the Lord was his strength. strength that's right. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the Lord knew that he needed the strength because he prayed fervently. He, he focused on the greatness of the one he was praying to because he knew mm -hmm. in this time of trouble, yes. he needed the Lord. He needed it. He needed the and Lord. And he came to him and gave him wisdom yes. how to deal with the situation at hand. Amen. 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 All right. So let's look at St. John chapter 13, verse 34. And 35. St. John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. Mm -hmm. Hear what it says. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you may also love one another. By this will all know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Amen. Amen. If we are going to attract people, yes. we must love must begin in the house. Amen. Amen. But that's a principle by which as believers we function. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Because love is 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 an is an love is a doing word. Yeah. Yeah. It is not just important for us to say that we love, but our actions speak louder than our words. Mm -hmm. What by how we treat each other, how what we do in regards to Helping and caring, right? Yeah. Shows how much we actually believe in what we're actually saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, so these are the words of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And he said, by this, all will know that you are my disciple. So if there's an absent of love, yes. it means that Christ is not really in our hearts. Right. Amen. No. That's and, and that's why, Pastor, it is so, when you were a leader, all eyes are on the leader. Yeah. So whatever yeah. we do, it impacts the entire team. And that's right. It's mm -hmm. also good to love and also to fester good relationship with yeah. your team. Mm -hmm. Because relationship, love covers a multitude of sins, yeah. right? That's but when you're in relationship, it makes a difference. And I, in this season, and, you know, and sometimes that can only foster through fellowshipping with one another. Yeah. And as we look at the different pillars of, you know, that that's one area that we're gonna we need to look at rebuilding, yeah. rebrand. Because when we're in relationship with people, that's right. yeah. it makes a difference. Yeah. And it starts with us as leaders. That's right. Because one of our f um, um, vision pillar is encourage each other right. through fellowship. fellowship. Yeah. You know, um, the the greatest aspect of fellowship is to be able to sit across the table mm -hmm. from your brothers and sisters. And, and, and dine with them, Amen. fellowship with them, commune with them, laugh with them. You know, you know, just being there present is absolutely important. Mm -hmm. We have all heard of people who say they don't want to go to church because of how people treat each other there. What a terrible testimony. Mm -hmm. Our action, our attitude should never repel people from God. Not at all. Let it not be said that someone <clears throat> do not want to associate with God or his church because of you, mm. because of your actions. So not only your actions are to be demonstrated in the house, but wherever you are, at your home, your workplace, let us live a life that brings honor and glory to God. We see in this passage of scripture, Nehemiah, he challenged the people to repent. Amen. Because it doesn't matter how much we, 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 we preach and we talk about um, what Nehemiah said, but we, we got to look at the aspect of repentance. When the people heard 
the rebuke from Nehemiah. What did they do? They didn't um, they just didn't get rebel. upset they and just rebel. Them. They repented. Yeah, they, repented. Yeah. they repented. It's absolutely important yeah. for us to recognize, right? Um, Nehemiah's conclusion, he did not, he did rebuke them, but he did not leave them with a rebuke. Amen. He called them to repent. And, and God is still doing the same today. He's asking us, my friend, to recognize that we have a responsibility to when we hear the word of God to respond to it. First Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. Praise God. And it says, without controversy, great is the mystery of Godness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preach among the Gentiles, believe in the word, in the world, received up in glory. Amen. So we believe what the word of the Lord says we ought to, to who God is. We are to respond when we hear the word of Almighty God. All right. Instead, um, he offered them a path to rest restoration. He offered them a solution. Amen. 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 God, thank God for the solution he offered us. There was a time, my friend, you know, when we were um, people who had no hope. We were lost. We were Gentiles. We had no covenant. But thanks be to God. We have been brought nigh. We are now part of the household of faith. And God wants to give that to you, my friend. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be part Amen. of that, this Amen. covenant. Amen. Our goal is not to make people feel badly. And sometimes that's necessary. That's yeah. necessary. Yes, sir. That's you know. <laughs> because sometimes that's necessary to bring repentance, Absolutely. you know. <laughs> but we, the goal is not to just leave them there, that's but it's right. to restore, restore them. To restore yeah. them. And that's what yeah. we see with Nehemiah. Yeah. He didn't just make them feel bad, but he restored them. Amen. Praise God. So let's look at Nehemiah chapter 5. Let's go back to Nehemiah chapter 5. And verses 12 and 13. Uh, Sister Mealy, could you read that for us? 5, 12, and 13. Verse 12 and verse 13. We will give it back, they said. Mm -hmm. And we will not demand anything more from them. Mm -hmm. We will do as you say. Then I summon the priest and made the nobles and officials take an oath to mm -hmm. do what they had promised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. I also shook out the folds of my robe and said, in this way, may God shake out of his house and possessions every man and every man who does not keep this promise. Mm -hmm. So may such a man be shaken out and emptied. And, uh, and this whole assembly said, Amen, Amen. <laughs> and praised the Lord. And the people did as they had promised. Glory to now God. Now you talk about serious business. Yeah, serious business. <laughs> Put them to the sword, <laughs> to the word. <laughs> the word. Yes. You know, so, <laughs> so he called them, you know, he, after he, he pointed out the, the wrong, mm -hmm. and he challenged them. And the Bible says, yeah, I love, but the, the, the people now responded. After they hear what Nehemiah had to say, they responded and, and yes. they said, we will restore it and require nothing from them. So we'll give it back yes. and, and ask for Thank nothing you, in Richard. return. Richard. Praise Hallelujah. God. That was favor. <laughs> yes. yes. It, would, it, would be nice, favor. it would be nice if people always repented like this. My God. <laughs> should, immediate yeah. repentance. Immediate, repentance. immediate yeah. repentance is important. I, I love the people said, you know yeah. what? We repent without yes. no conditions. My God. No conditions. Favor. Yeah. Yes. But Nehemiah prayed for pay, favor. Oh, yes. He, he prayed, prayed he against prayed. resistance. Yes. Yeah. And now when he see God plan come into futility, yes. <clears throat> He yeah. just have to give glory to yes, God for yeah. all that he has That's done. That's right. Yeah. I'm sure God is challenging some of us tonight yes. to repent without any condition. Hallelujah. Without any condition. Without any condition. Mm. Remove the conditions we have yeah. been putting on. I want to change, but. Yes. I want to do better, but. You know, I, I, I want to go a different direction, but. 
There is no conditions. We see the people, they responded with no condition. Amen. But Nehemiah did not stop there, yeah. you know, <laughs> because he re realized requi repentance requires follow through. They have to follow through. And look at um, verse, verses um, 12, the second part of verses 12. They might call the priests yes. and require an oath from them that they would do according to this promise. So what you have promised, he said, yes. I hear you. I know you repent, but we're going we, we're gonna to cut an oath here. Yeah. We, 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 right. we, there's going to be a, 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 a another, requirement, yeah. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you know, for you to follow through. Yeah. You know, just in case you know that it's important that you follow through, you follow through. on what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. Going back on their commitment would be disastrous for the people. Amen. God, uh, Nehemiah didn't want him to go back on their promise. No, Nehemiah didn't stop. Look at verse 12. Then I shook out the fold of my garment. So yes. in other words, yes. he, he, he took his robe and yes. shook it out. So may, and he said, so may God shake out each yes. man from his house. I don't know about you, but if I hear that, I will follow through. Yes, yeah, definitely. Oh, <laughs> you know, I don't know about God. you, my friend. You, you don't, you don't want to get to a place where, you God. know, you, you have gone back so many times on your promises yeah. where mm. you're no longer good for anything. Mm. But let's follow through. He said, uh, <clears throat> the shake up from his house and from his p property, who does not perform this promise, even thus may he be shaken out and emptied. Mm. Uh, that's serious. That's serious. That's serious. And that's why I mentioned before, Bishop, that the people had, they had a fear. Yeah. They understood the power of the prophet. Yeah. That yeah. when yeah. he has the ability to speak yes. curse yes. and blessing upon yes. the right. Mm. My God. My yeah. God. You know, God help us in this time that we recognize that, um, and I think even sometimes, even as leaders, we don't require much of people. There's no accountability. No accountability. Hold them into accountability. And yeah. I like this because he called a priest and have them take an oath. So yeah. there is an accountability yes. factor here. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. sometimes um, we allow people to get away with so much yes. and we don't hold them accountable yeah. to what is needed. But here we see Nehemiah said, you know what? I'm not just going to um, tell you to go ahead and, and make a promise. And if you don't follow through, there's nothing behind there's it. No. But he said, if you're going to make a promise, you need to follow through on the promise that you have made. That's you need right. to follow through. And my friends, I don't know what covenant you have entered in with God, but God wants you to follow through. Amen. Because, you know, I think it's the, the, the Ecclesiastes said, it's, it's better that you did not promise and, not to, and then you don't fulfill it. If you made an oath, you need to follow through Amen. on what the oath that you have made. Yeah. Amen. We cannot afford to go back on our commitment. Mm -hmm. Going back on our commitment, my friends, it is disastrous for yes. everyone. It is disastrous for you, for your families, mm -hmm. for generation. Mm -hmm. If God has made, if you have made a covenant with Almighty God, fulfill that covenant that He has made with you mm -hmm. today. Amen. 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 Let's go back. To, go on to verses 14, verses 14 to 19. He said, "Moreover, from the time." that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah from the 20th year until the 32nd, 32nd year of King Artaxerxes, 12 years, neither I nor my brothers ate the governor's provision. Mm. But the former governor who were before me laid burdens on the people and took from them bread and wine beside 40 shekels of silver. Yes, even their servants bore rule over the people, but I did not do so because of the fear of God. Indeed, I also continued the work on this wall, and we did not buy any land. All my servants were gathered there for the work, and at my table were not 150 Jews and rulers beside those who came to us from the nations around us. Now that which was um, prepared daily was one ox and six choice sheep. Also fowls were prepared for me, and once every ten days an abundance of all kind of wine. Yet in spite of all this, I did not demand the governor's provision because the bondage was heavy on this people. Remember me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people. Yeah. What, what a resume. My God. 
it, it, it is so important that that folks can can work on their situation where yeah. they're not burdened down with with external um, mm -hmm. by external force. So, yes, and and and. and Struggling how to support their own uh, me mm -hmm. measly existing. That's right. While trying to accomplish a task. That's right. So what the Nehemiah did was free them from all of that bondage, yeah. right? So they're yeah. able to work freely mm -hmm. and accomplish the task without any um, yeah. oppression from within and from without. Yeah. And he, he said, um, um, the governor before me put pressure on the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. And he said, um, I'm not going to be like that governor. Yeah. I'm not going to come and put pressure on the people. I'm going to be right. different. That's right. Because how could Nehemiah effectively get these people mm -hmm. to work and to build the wall and yeah. bring forth the result if they were under oppression? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no way they could ever right. work. That's right. So God gave him the wisdom right away to step in. In order for me to get these people to work effectively, mm -hmm. they need to be freed. Yeah. Right. You know, it's 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 important for us to see the the heart of servant servant to right. servant. servant because sometimes you know, well, Nehemiah could have said, well, I'm the governor. I don't care. You know, I'm the governor. Um, 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 I'm going to do things based on the precedent. Yeah. But he recognized the importance of servanthood. He jumped in and he served. He served. He uh, he said, I fear God. So in my servant and my right. service, I'm going to do That's things right. as a God-fearing leader. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. And also, Pastor, if I, I had this written away. If, yeah. if one rule as a king with a servant spirit, people will serve you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mark 10, 45 states, the son of man, Jesus, did not come to be served, mm -hmm. but to serve and give his life a, a ransom, ransom for mm -hmm. many. Mm -hmm. uh, right? You know, we talk about ransom is a sum of money mm -hmm. that is the man in exchange for something. Christ paid the ultimate price yes, for us. Yes, 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 yes. Pays the ultimate price. Yeah. yeah. I, I love what you said. As if a king mm -hmm. and serve mm -hmm. as a servant, yes. he will be respected. Amen. Amen. The people will follow him. Amen. Will follow. Amen. In our world today, you know, it's it's there's a culture of entitlement. Mm. A culture that like says, you know, yeah. um, yeah. um this is who yeah. I am, mm -hmm. my this office, my I'm, I'm a leader, you know, bow to me, do what I say. But God wants us to serve. Amen. It doesn't matter what office you hold, it doesn't matter what position, what title. Because so many times we are caught up with titles. Yes. You know, God just wants us to serve as servant. Praise God. Hallelujah. I, I, Nehemiah is saying, here, I did not ask the people to do something that I myself was not Amen. willing to do. Willing to Amen. Do. Amen. Yes. We, got, we must be willing to do yeah. what we ask what people we're to do. Right. Definitely. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because otherwise we are we are standing aloof, yes. you know, and saying, well, you know, I'm, I'm the bishop, yeah. Yeah. you know, I, I cannot do this, you know, you know, I'm this son and that, I cannot yeah. do this. But God wants us to put yeah. our hands to the plow right. without looking back. Yeah. Got a leader's example. Yeah. 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 Yep. And as leaders, our position does not include us from humility. Mm -hmm. There's not a way around that. Yeah. And that's a great leader always exemplify show that's forth right. that spirit of humility mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. i love it said nehemiah because he feared god he also sacrificed his own money he yeah. also sacrificed his own resources yeah. Right. He didn't man de demand the governor's food allowance. Mm -hmm. He served 150 Jewish officials every day at his own cost. Mm -hmm. This was not cheap. Not he was point. not looking after his own interests, but he was looking after the interests mm -hmm. of others. Amen. And if, 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 if we see how this passage ended, I love it, it ended. Mm -hmm. If we go back to verse 19, read that for us, Elder Facey. Verse 19. Verse 19. Yeah. Remember me my god for good mm -hmm. according to all that i have done for these people huh. yeah. now uh, what a powerful verse a if, if, powerful. If, when, when we when we read up from verse 1 to verse 18 we see the the oppression and the 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 advantage they were being taken by those who were less fortunate. We see Nehemiah calling the people to account, and he's saying this needed to be done, and challenged them to yes. make restitution. The people responded, they make, made restitution. Then we see Nehemiah bringing them to make an oath that they could follow through, and then Nehemiah giving an account 
uh, give an account of all that he had done yes. and how he had served the people. Yes. Then verses 19, he asks this of God. Yes. He says, remember me, my God, yes. for good. Amen. Amen. According to all that I have done for yeah. these people. Yeah. He didn't ask the nobles to remember yeah, him. No. <laughs> he didn't ask the, the tribes to remember yeah. him. He asked God. God. Hallelujah. To remember him. Hallelujah. My friends, when God Glory remember God. you, there is no let down, Amen. there is no disappointment, there is no setback. Jeez. I think it's a prophet, um, the uh, wise man Solomon has said, is better um, to, it is it's better to lend to God. Yes. You know, it's a good thing to lend yes. to Almighty God. Yes. When we give to the poor, we lend to, to God. Almighty yes. God. Yes. I want to encourage you, my friends, to whatever you're doing for God, do it joyfully. Amen. I want you to pray that prayer over your life today. Yes. Amen. You know, your faithfulness, the Amen. seed you have been sowing, yes. ask God to remember you. Amen. Yes. Ask God to remember you for your good. Amen. We close with this. It was in, in, in the book of Acts that God said to, um, to Peter, uh, he, the scripture said Peter was uh, on our rooftop one day and, and, and what happened? The angel of the Lord came down and, 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 and brought this, this container of uh, uh, different, types. different type of animals. Yeah. And Peter said, I, I don't eat those stuff. You know, God said to him, arise, eat. But then God sent him to, to the house of Cornelius. Cornelius. Yes. He said, go to Cornelius' house, yes. and this is what you're going to tell Cornelius. Mm -hmm. Your prayers yes. and your arms, Amen. your giving, yes. your goodness have come up as a, as a memorial, memorial before me. Yes. My friends, yes. I want you to know God does not forget. No. In due season, yes. we shall reap if we faint not. Bless Praise Lord. God. Bless Look to the camera. Yes. Any last words for the, for the folks? Yes, yes. Like... When I read to the book of Nehemiah, and I write my notes down because I need to deliver. Nehemiah was a great leader. Yeah. He was a motivator. Mm -hmm. And he recognized all the workers and he keep an account of what each person did and their contribution to building up the wall. Yes. What a great leader Nehemiah was. Mm -hmm. Not every team member need to be motivated. Mm -hmm but some need to be motivated. I encourage every leader in progress to continue to foster unity and to ensure every member mm -hmm. know that they're valuable and that their contribution matter. Yeah. I encourage the body to rise in unity and strength. One can chase a thousand, yes. but two can put 10,000 to flight. A quote from our pastor as he teach on the pattern uh, a few months ago, he mentioned that no man can do anything, but every man can, can do, do something. something. Mm. It was a team that built a wall, and it will also be a team to repair and rebuild mm. as we go through the season yeah. in the house of progress. Let's arise progress. Amen. 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 Ah, my final thought on this is that I have great admiration and respect for Nehemiah because he was connected to the people, had a spirit of connection to the people. Not only was he connected, mm -hmm. but he cared and concerned yes, about their, yeah. their well-being, right? And so then he was able to make the ultimate sacrifice mm -hmm. of what he had in order to be like them in the same position, that's right? right? That's right. And that, that, that strike me really good that that as leadership we need to take on that spirit that Nehemiah had. Yes, mm -hmm. amen. That we need to not, not only uh, care about our own need, but concern about the needs of amen. others according to the word. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Friends, we want to take the opportunity to invite you this time to come on in into the Zoom room. Those who are watching on our uh, digital platform, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, come on in, log into the Zoom room for a time of discussion. We want to hear from you. Um, Progress Church at Home, those who are in the Zoom room, we know at this time we just want to go through the word of the Lord and experience the blessing and the power of Almighty God. We, we, in this season, the unity is needed for repair, rebuild, and rebrand. Thank you so much for joining us another Wednesday night. God bless you. We want to hear from you. Send us an email, info at progresschurch.com. Have a wonderful evening.